we've spent the last week here on Mars as the green screen backdrop. As soon as I announced that last Sunday, one of my other longtime and loyal viewers who loves history, no kidding, I really mean it, <laughs> messaged me to ask for Abraham Lincoln in the green screen backdrop. So this week, Mr. Lincoln will be joining us in the backdrop here. Next week, we'll return to the aquamarine backdrop. But if there's something you'd like to see in the backdrop, drop me a comment and I'll see what I can do. Nothing indecent, because while this content is not made specifically for children, I know that people of all ages watch my videos, so we must remain family friendly. Images need to be something I can get that's free to use and share so that we don't run into copyright issues. That said, let's get on with today's day in history. Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for March 12th. March 12th is the 71st day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 72nd in leap years, with 294 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is smithereens. <laughs> Smithereens is a noun that means small broken pieces, fragments, bits, usually used in such phrases as smashed to smithereens or blown to smithereens. Smithereens comes to us from Irish words that mean little bits or fragments. First known use in English is the late 1700s and widely popularized by the cartoon character Yosemite Sam in the 1900s, Smithereens. And with that, on March 12, 1894, Coca-Cola was sold in glass bottles for the first time. Originally developed as a non-addictive substitute for morphine and then marketed as a non-alcoholic temperance drink, Coca-Cola was originally only available at a drugstore and then at drugstore fountains for five cents a glass. The light bulb came on when somebody got the idea that they could sell a lot more of it if they would put it in bottles and then they could sell it to the public. So that's what they did. Coca-Cola. Back in the 1920s, Los Angeles County in California was experiencing booming growth. Los Angeles was gaining a great number of people, and they were looking for ways to keep up with the infrastructure needs. Water supply, for example. They built a dam to create a reservoir, the St. Francis Dam. Took them a couple years to build that dam from 1924 to 1926. And we're going to take a side trip here while I tell you that back when I took geology in college, <laughs> it's been a while ago, uh, I really enjoyed that course, by the way. One of the lessons that really stuck with me is that whenever a developer is planning a big project, they would be wise to consult a geologist or geologists to see if there are any quirks of geology that might prove problematic or need special consideration. Now, it could have been to an insufficient construction process, but Whenever I hear about a dam failure or a building collapse, I always wonder if they consulted a geologist before they started. Back to today's story, minutes before midnight on March 12, 1928, after having been completed only two years, that St. Francis Dam suffered a catastrophic fail and collapsed, killing 431 people. Turns out they did hire geologists, but they did that after the collapse to see what caused the collapse. It was not an earthquake. They probably should have made that consultation before they started. This is the birthday of an author whose work I have enjoyed, Carl Hyacin. Born March 12, 1953, he started out as a newspaper reporter. Found a lot of inspiration for his novels while working the city desk on investigative teams. My late Uncle Lanny was reading Carl Hyson one time when we took a big family trip back in 2012. He enjoyed those books a great deal, and he talked about him every time I saw him. <laughs> so I went back to my room and downloaded one on the Amazon Books app and read it and downloaded another one and so on. I'm pretty sure that I've read everything that Carl Hyson has written up to that point. He does write some interesting characters who recur in subsequent novels. Carl Hyacin. 
Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley came out in July of 1987. That was his first single from his debut album, and it is his most famous song, Never Gonna Give You Up. Hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 on March 12, 1988, held that spot for two weeks. Never Gonna Give You Up has enjoyed a resurgence of popularity since about 2007 due to the Rick Roll internet meme where, say, for example, on the internet, one may be expecting a certain kind of content, but instead is shown the video, (laughs) or perhaps just in general out in the wild somewhere, to be surprised with the video or the song, often beginning right at the never-going-to-give-you-up part. (laughs) As a result of the Rickroll phenomenon, this video has, at the time of this research, over... 1.3 1.3 billion views on YouTube. <laughs> Never going to give you up by Rick Astley, number one, March 12th, 1988. Of course, there's a link in the description. <laughs> and I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include a link to my blog page that is called No Really. (laughs) You can also find me on Rumble, Parlor, BitChute, and Gitter. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Do not disturb. Okay, I turned do not disturb on. Good job. Third time better be a charm. (laughs) January 2nd. The 16th. It's all written in Roman numerals, so I had to translate it. (laughs) Flinging happiness all over the place. All right, back to work. I think we got it this time.